TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are live. But by the time you see this, we won't be. So just leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK right behind me. You see it? Warning. Also, twitch.com. So you can catch a live usernames at the bottom of the screen. And we also got Patreon. We just started Game of Thrones on there. Very interesting. It's like soft core, like, never mind. Uh, let's get into this, man. Can't pay, we'll take it away. Season 5, Episode 5. Talk to me. Copyright, copyright disclaimer, disclaimer under Section 107, 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. True. Research has shown that more than 80% of small and medium-sized businesses are owed, on average, over £60,000 in unpaid invoices. One in five businesses say they are losing profits as a direct result of late payments. Six billion? High Court Enforcement Agents Matt Highway and Gary Ball travel hundreds of miles each week across the West Midlands, collecting debts and seizing goods. What number is it, man? Uh, 141. Today they're in Birmingham to recover a debt of more than £12,000 owed by... You in Birmingham, it might be rough, buddy. You might not get that back. You might, might just chalk it up. Shopkeeper, no man Chohan, to one of his suppliers. If Mr. Chohan can't or won't pay, Gary and Matt have the power to away. seize stock from his accessory shop to offset the debt. Morning. Oh, you're expecting yeah. me? I was actually. I was going to give you guys a call today. I'll crack him. Mr. Uh, Mr. Chohan? Yes, that's me, Mr. Chohan. No man, yes. Hello, sir. My name's Mr. Highway, my high court enforcement agent. What type of shop is this? Accessory shop? What are they selling? We're here today, so the, the outstanding Ricks are collecting an outstanding sum of twelve thousand seven hundred eighty. Yeah, I'm not sure what I've spoken to, but like nine pence. Um, you used to be my dad's shop, just down the road, two days away. Right. And the debt was actually for that business that closed, I think, four years ago. Right. Um, I don't know for some reason they put my name on there. Yeah. I actually used to work there. I was studying at the time. Okay. I just used to help out. But obviously, it's my dad's business. The Ricks is against you personally. Yeah, I've actually spoken to. Um, the Northampton County go basically. Right. I'm just waiting for the call. Right. They were supposed to go in, but um, to stand aside over. I think it was. Yeah, that'll be for an application to set aside the writ. Mr. Chohan says it's his father and not him who owes the money, and that he's appealed the case. That's how it always is, man. You didn't let your dad put stuff in your name, now it's coming back. That's how I'm looking at it, you hear me? But the writ is against no man Chohan, trading as Chohan. And the agents have enough evidence to believe that they're in the right place. So we're here to execute the writ. Uh, so that's on the balance of 12,782.79. Otherwise we will be taking control of goods. Okay, so, debt, so I only have one question for you. Can you pay the outstanding balance? Okay, so we're to, we're to seize goods then, sir. Yeah, just give me a second. Let me just... While Mr. Chohan calls his father, the agents start to look around the shop for goods they could seize if there's no offer of payment. Matt immediately spots some car keys, but his actions haven't gone unnoticed. Mate, you want to give my keys back to me? No, at the minute they're seized, sir. No, you, they're not seized because it's not my car, it's a pocket car. Okay. Give me my keys. No, at the moment they're seized. Give, give me my car keys. No, at the, moment, here, at the yeah. moment they're seized, sir. Give me my car keys, mate. No, well, at, the moment, at the moment they're, se they're seized. Can I have my writ back? Don't Thank you. your keys, mate. Thanks so much. What's wrong with you, man? Seriously? I'm trying to explain something to you, yeah? It's got nothing to do with me. I've listened to your explanation, but it doesn't make any sense. When enforcing a writ, you know, we can see um, from experience, uh, if people's well, tensions are rising. Um, Buddy then puffed out his chest and everything. You know, you can see it in the way they're acting. They're Why just... is this keys right there anyway, instead of like in back? 
Like any customer who has bad intentions could just walk in there and snatch them and tell them like, shh, these are my keys now, buddy. Just the way they're behaving, the volume of their voice. We're constantly of a, of a calm manner all the way through the enforcement. We don't raise our voice, we don't shout and scream. That's not what we're there to do. You know, we're there to calm the issue back down again and get on with what we're there to do. As Mr Chohan says he can't pay, Gary heads out to find his car. But all he's got to go on is a Mercedes key ring. Just keep hitting the lock for a Mercedes. Hit the panic button. Ah, there we are. It uh, looks a nice Mercedes. 14 plate, E220. If the car is... That's an E-Class? That's, I always thought E-Class was nice. That'll do it, right? Free of finance, it can be seized <coughs> to offset the debt. Gary heads back to the shop to do a finance check. Good morning, Derek. Good morning. Can uh, you put me through someone to do a HPI check, please? Yeah. Is it a fleet car, is it? The car is on a lease agreement. Ah. As it isn't owned outright by Mr. Chohan, it can't be seized. Now the agent's only option is to remove stock from the shop. But because the jewellery and shoes are of low value, they will have to take almost all of, all it, of it to come anywhere close to clearing the £12,000 debt. Matt calls the office to authorise removal. We're at the property at the moment. Uh, it's a, a shop selling Asian jewellery and shoes. Um, there's absolutely no chance of payment, so we're going to be looking at removal stage, mate, on it. Mr Chohan still seems reluctant to cooperate with the agents. As they start to pack up the assets, Mr Chohan suddenly closes the shutters and walks out, leaving an assistant behind to mind the shop. Closing them shutters, that's something you might not want to do. I can't believe they've just gone. Or maybe they're at the bank, withdrawing 12,000. You never know, do you? Stranger things have happened. Gary, I found a lovely set for you here. Oh, yeah? Yes. My weekend attire? I think they call them a pendant drop. Oh, a pendant drop? Hmm. I don't know how I know that, but... <laughs> Suddenly, the shop assistant hands Matt her phone. Hello? Let me just take some details from you, about a second. Yeah. An official from the county court is on the line. Obviously, at this point in time, we're executing the writ here. Can you make sure the judge is aware of that as well? The reason for Mr Chohan's quick disappearance is becoming clear. Lovely, thank you. He says the defendant is in front of me, and in the next half an hour to 45 minutes, he's going to put him in front of a judge. It seems that, that Mr. Chohan is at the county court and has secured an emergency hearing to get the writ suspended. It was not planned. It's an unprecedented turn of events for the... First of all, I didn't even know that was an option. Why have we not ever seen this before in five seasons? Agents. I've never heard that one before. I've never heard that one before. Especially that quick. It's a new one on me. While Matt and Gary wait to hear the outcome of the emergency hearing, they have the right to continue enforcement action. To get a court appointment on the day of enforcement, I have never seen this happen before. But you oh, just so have to deal with it. Okay. There's a legal process that we have to stick to. Unless I've got a letter from the judge, we're not going to leave. We're going to stay and we're going to execute this High Court writ. But what happened next would take them both by surprise. What's about to happen? <laughs> surprise, surprise. That's what I like to hear. Let's get negative. Two hours later, Mr. Chohan suddenly returns with two of his brothers. Are you back? Oh. Come on, you interviewed him, What's happened, but? What's Body. happening? Sir, you tell me what's happening, sir. You tell me what's happening. Whoa! Get the fuck out. Don't touch me. Get the fuck out. Sorry, get the fuck out. Wait, wait. Get out. Get a fuck up, Boldy. What the fuck is this into you? Get you bastard. Get him off my fucking shop. Get the fuck out of my shop. Get him off, bitch. This unusual case has suddenly... That is assault. And I'm here for it, YouTube. I don't condone it, but, you know, negative. Let's get. You feel me? That's, let's rewind. I ain't never think I ever rewind. If, bro, if somebody slapped the back of my head that I did not know, I'm instantly putting him in a full Nelson turning him upside down 
and and tombstoning him. I'm I'm becoming the Undertaker in that moment. I'm not playing with you, dude. That's crazy. What's happening? 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 Whoa! Don't touch me. Get the fuck out. Get the fuck out. Wait, wait. Get out. Get the fuck out, Boldy. What the fuck is sending you? Get him out of my fucking shop. Get the fuck out of my shop. This unusual case has suddenly taken a violent turn. Oh, fuck, are you looking at you? Oh, why, mate? Move out of the way. It will take all of Matt and Gary's experience to get the situation back under control. Why would they let his brother go in there and do that? That's ill brothers. High Court Enforcement Agents Gary Ball and Matt Highway were at an accessory shop in Birmingham to collect over £12,000 owed to a supplier. I knew, I knew, I knew it was going to be Birmingham that, that kicked it off. <laughs> that got the first arrest. By shopkeeper Noman Chohan. So I only have one question for you. Can you pay the outstanding balance? Mr. Chauhan denied the debt was his. Like nothing to do with me. And in an unprecedented move, managed to get an on-the-spot hearing at the county court. Half an hour. To at that point, right here, when he let down these shutters, if this was a more seasoned veteran group, they would have called police immediately. <laughs> this would have been the moment. And you would have never got that uh, head slap. Dented move managed to get an on the spot hearing at the county court. He had an on the spot hearing, he must have lost. They must have not overturned it. For an hour to 45 minutes, he's going to put him in front of a judge. That's I've never anger. heard that one before. But when he returned to the shop with his brothers, the situation turned violent and Gary was assaulted. Body. Whoa! Get the fuck out of my shop, you son of a bitch! Get on me, get on me! Now, Gary and Matt have got to get this debt recovery back on track. Can you the police, please? My name's uh, Gary Ball, a high court enforcement agent. I've just been assaulted. With the police on their way, they need to find out what's been happening at the court. Yeah. You've been to court. What did the court say? Can you read, you stupid fuck? Can you read? You dumb fucker. The document is confirmation that the writ has been suspended pending a further hearing. I'll take a picture. So the writ got suspended and he came and put his hand? That's stupid. That's dumb. Why would you even do that? Like you won. You won the board battle right now, but just because of that five second decision, you lost the war. The agents aren't able to continue enforcement action today. But the men aren't calming down. Don't fuck okay, that, use your brain. Use your brain, you dumb bastards. You dumb bastards. You dumb bastards. Abuse the fuck out of bastards. Fuck, bastard bailiffs. I do this every day of the week. He doesn't concern me. He doesn't concern me. You don't worry me one bit. When insults are flowing, I don't take it personally. There isn't anything anybody could call me I've not heard before. It's just the way people react sometimes. Unfortunately, it's part of life. 20 minutes later, the police finally arrive. And Mr. Chow... It really might be up. They brought the van. Chauhan immediately leaves the shop. The guy that's assaulted my colleague is this guy in the black T-shirt. He's try has tried to leave the scene. Okay, you, you're telling me yeah, we called you. My name is Matthew Hyde. I'm a high court enforcement agent. Like it's my colleague, Mr. Ball. Well, hey, listen, a warrant will be put out there. Right? Uh, we've been here for a little while. Yeah, I was doing some paperwork at the counter here. Next thing I know, I felt a... Uh, punch or a slap or something in the back of my head. He grabbed me, uh, was trying to throw me out. He's been arrested. Yeah, he's with colleagues. Outside, Mr. Chohan's father arrives, just as his son is being handcuffed. Take the father too. He immediately starts abusing the agents himself. Stay favorite words, son of a, son of a, son of a gun. It's not nice to be assaulted. They had the result they wanted. They, they put a hold on the case. There was no reason whatsoever for him to come back in the way that he did. And yeah, I don't understand it. You won. You you just show them the paper and they're going to leave. If you slapped them in, his, in the back of his head, now you're done. Assault <laughs> me. You know, they've got the letter from the judge. They could have just showed it us. We'd have took a picture and we would have left. But that's what he wanted to do. And he got arrested for it. 
With the situation still volatile, the police advise Matt and Gary to leave the scene. As well as his court date to contest the debt, Mr Chohan could now face an assault charge. When people start assaulting us, doing our job, then you know, it's just not on and we won't stand for it. Um, and we have a policy to prosecute every time. Come in a right blind of me. Did I? Yeah. He just went to the back so of me. So even if he wanted to be like, man, I ain't even worried about it. He can't. That's the night policy. That's tough. Blind side of me? Whack. This one's been gone to jail for the night. No lie, it was very unexpected. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> the number of landlords in the UK who are owed money by their tenants is on the rise with the average amount owed exceeding £1,600. With rents predicted to rise faster than house prices over the next five years, rent arrears are estimated to be the biggest problem facing landlords in 2017. High Court Enforcement Agents Steve Pinner and Max Carraher are in Brom. Hey, that's a good combo. Rookie with a vet. Bromley, South East London. South with East a writ London, to collect yeah. over £5,000 owed by Miss Frances Jackson to an ex landlord. This one is over unpaid rents. We're looking to collect £5,216.60. The address is on a busy main road protected by a security gate. Hello, can anyone hear me? Do you think that buzzer's working? Can't reach to nothing to do it. <laughs> Nobody appears to be in. But moments later, there are signs of life. A light's just come on in the top bedroom. There's still no sign of Miss Jackson. So the agents change tactic. Could we reposition the van so we're completely blocking the gates? Hopefully that will gain some response. The agent's move immediately pays off. There we go. Hello, Miss Jackson. Hello, my name's Max Carraher. I'm a High Court Enforcement agent. Oh, yeah. Francis, we've been sent out um, because you owe money totaling £5,216.60. Yeah, I know You this. know about and this. And I did text him and said that I was willing to pay him £50 a month. £50 a month? Yeah. I lost my job. And I... £50 a month? Girl, you got on an ostrich jacket in a, in, in a, in a, in a two-story... What is that? Traditional British home. You think we believe you? And then you got a low haircut and it's blonde, so I know you get stuff done. So let's get it. Let's stop the bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Let's cut. Is that a Rolex on your wrist? Like, come on. Couldn't afford to stay in his house. Be for real. Door. Really? Yeah. Okay. So I had to move out, and he was amicable. There was no nastiness. And then I got a job, and I texted him and said, "Look, I'm offering to pay you fifty pound a month. At the moment, that's all I can afford to pay." As Miss Jackson's offer of £50 a month would take eight and a half years to pay off. Eight and a half years is crazy. They was, I'm sorry, Miss Jackson. I got that joke from the chat. Did it hit? The landlord escalated the case to the High Court to get his money back sooner. Now Stephen Max must get this case resolved today, one way or another. That still leaves us in the situation that we need to collect on the just over five thousand pounds. Have you got anybody who you can call as a lifeline? No, that's why I have to pay monthly. Yeah. I haven't got anything. That's why I'm starting from scratch to try and build myself up again. We're commanded to come to the property to see. Is it not? Do you rent a room? I haven't got anything. All the furniture in the room is the ladies. Failing to collect on it, what we need to do is I have to call for removals to inspect goods in your room, see if there's anything worth us removing. It's not what I want to do at all, it's but I have no choice. Lining, now I need my car. So I'm what do you do? Take my car? If that's my only option, then yes, I have to take your car. With no means to pay and no assets in the house, the agents have no option but to see. Miss Jackson's good. She's a good capper. 
She could very well be broke, but she still put keep herself together. You know what I'm saying? And that's that's that at the end of the day, that's how you gotta move. You gotta look like something to feel like something sometimes. He's Miss Jackson's car. So what do I do now? Um, I'll probably call your employer to say that you you won't be making it to work on time. My hands are tied in the no matter. No one I can get five thousand pounds off. No. Nobody I know. I bring home eleven hundred pound a month. Yeah. Working five days a week. Yeah. I'm sorry, right. but that, don't be silly. You don't have to say sorry to me. That's all right. All I did was give up my flat and my job to come to London and nurse my father who yeah. could, it was either that or put him in a home to die and I weren't doing that that's awful that's absolutely awful and I awful. nursed him until he died and he lived in a retirement flat ok once he died we had to sell the flat and split the money with my sisters and yeah. it wasn't a lot and then um, I rented a house for a year and then I couldn't afford to pay it and this is what's happened I, I really do understand what you're saying I'm Frankie. sorry Frankie is, that is absolutely awful. And I've got nothing. Yeah. Now I rent a room and now I haven't even been out Thank you very much. It is hard some days, because some cases where you know yeah, that... She did give it up. ...someone easy. is genuine and they don't actually genuine. have anything. And the only thing they have is their tiny little car. I talked all that shit and didn't feel bad now all of a sudden. That's tough. Which means the world to them... But to the claimant, it's just money. So sometimes it's really hard, but at the end of the day, we're still commanded to collect the money. It's clear that since her father's illness, Frankie has fallen on hard times. But now it's not only her car she's worried about losing. If the woman I rent this house comes down and says this, I'm not even gonna have anywhere to live. That's ridiculous. We can move the vehicle to somewhere where she won't see the recovery. I don't and that... want her to know anything. Okay, we, we'll move the vehicle. The agents allow Frankie to move her car away from the driveway. But before they call recovery, Max asks her one more time whether she can raise any funds. There is no way that you can sort this out well, without there is, us. But not is there? Today. What way is that? The only way I can do it is to ask my boss or ask my ex, or, but I can't do it like right now because my brain is just... I, you know what, I can see that, I can see that you're shaky and I understand. I'm sorry, I don't know if I'm coming or going. That's all right. Don't, don't panic. Take take a deep breath and refocus. Have you got a couple of grand in savings? I had. What do you have in savings, Frankie? Two pounds. Have you got any other no. assets? Not anything. Jewellery, watches. I know. Royce just calmly passes by and travels. None of them people. I just live a simple life. I've never earned the money. They're just normal people that just go to work and live on your wages. We just come from a normal working class loving family. And this is just the worst thing ever. I'm going to have no car now. I've got nothing. I like, even own my own bed. I just can't date no more. All I did was look after Dad. Right now, I just feel like running away. I can tell it's a very stressful situation. When somebody's emotional, it does have a knock-on effect on, on us because we can see the situation they're in and how they are and and we still have to try and get through the job. She's genuine and she's a, she's a great actor. She was a genuine, honest, hard-working person who just, yeah, just had a hard time. Max and Steve have now been at the property for an hour. Even though the vehicle is only likely to raise half the £5,000 owed, seizing it is the agent's only option. Max calls for recovery. I've got the keys to the vehicle. <laughs> the yeah. only way to chip off of this debt will be removing vehicle. Okay, no Thanks very much, okay. John. I think it really is all hitting home now that she's got high court enforcement agents standing at her door. And unfortunately, after this, there's still going to be an outstanding amount. Taking her vehicle away is not going to help her personal situation. We'll do the vehicle However, the 50 we are pounds. commanded to look from it from the claimant's point of view. There's always two sides to every story.
While the agents wait for the recovery truck to arrive, Frankie gets on the phone to her ex-partner. How is she? She's calmed down a bit. Her ex-partner, he's going to come and finish work. I'm going to come and pick her up and take her off for a few days and wait for me. To prevent further love, distress, bro. Steve wants her to go inside before the recovery vehicle... Let one of my exes call me talking about some $5,000. I would have, hey, ma'am, I'm your ex. Remember, you left me. It's up. <laughs> Good luck. Dude. Arrives. I'll try and move the car up the road away from the house for you. You go and have yourself a cup of tea. So, you know, I'm just, just trying to make sure that you're okay. Okay. As Frankie goes inside to wait for her ex, recovery arrives to remove her car. It's a shame. We have right? to do it. She changed her whole lifestyle to look after her dad. And ever since then, she's slid down and down and down, hasn't she? I've got the keys or you've got the keys? I've got the keys. Frankie's car will be sold at auction and the cash raised offset against the debt. The office will contact her to set up a payment plan for the rest of the balance. But if she doesn't keep up with her repayments, the agents will be back. 1100 a month. Max and Steve have had to deal with a sensitive situation. But in Matt and Gary's next case... Oh, you stolen everything there. Three right. million pounds. Uh, 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 uh. Across the UK, people living in rural communities are struggling to make ends meet. Average wages are over four and a half thousand pounds lower than those in urban areas. A thousand pound increase in the gap since 2010. <coughs> Matt Highway and Gary Ball are now in Wrexham, North Wales on their way to a farm to collect over £6,000 owed to an engineering consultancy firm by builder and property developer Michael Brownrigg. Yeah, we're off to see a Mr Michael Brownrigg and he owes £6,611.51. As the agents drive into the property, they meet a vehicle coming the other way. Is that him? This might be him. Could be. Hi, sir. Hello, sir. I'm Michael Brownrigg. I ask who it is. Yeah, we're High Court Enforcement agents. Hey, what's your name, sir? Uh, I am Michael. You yeah. are Michael. Yeah. Oh, you are Michael. Oh, yeah, sir. Should we pop back in and have a chat with you about a High Court writ, sir? This is my property here. Right. I don't have any property. But the writ is for this address, sir, so. Uh, well, the address doesn't belong to me. You don't know the address, sir. We've not told you the address, have we? So, so do you know it's not for you when we've not told you an address? Here's the High Court writ, sir. That's your copy. It's uh, six six thousand six hundred eleven pound and fifty one pence. I have offered to pay this debt. Mm -hmm. I accept that. Okay. And what I'm going to do is now go to his offices in um, Chester, yeah. and I'm going to go and see him personally. After first insisting the agents him. were at the wrong address, Michael now says he has an arrangement to pay off the debt, but the time for informal agreements has come and gone. Yeah, it's out of there. You know, it's done. Unfortunately, sir, the, the company's talking about just taking you to the county court. They've been successful in, in getting a CCJ against you. It's now been escalated to the High Court for enforcement purposes, which is why we're here. I don't have any assets. I've got absolutely nothing. Right, OK. Can you clear this balance, sir? I can pay you £100 now. OK. Then that's all I'll be able it's to a, pay. It's a six and a half thousand pound debt, yeah, I, I understand that, but I have no <coughs> payment today of £100. It isn't even going to cover the interest on it, is it? <sighs> Knowing his offer won't be accepted by the claimant, the agent's only option is to look for any assets Michael might own that they could seize. Well, you can't come past it. This is not my ground. Yes, I can see. I have high court risk. I can go anywhere in England and Wales. I'm, I'm going to be carrying on, OK? As Michael is listed on the electoral register at the address, the agents have a right oh, to explore the estate. Official, official. Oh, there's a tractor. There doesn't seem to be anything of value on the land, so the agents must investigate the contents of the outbuildings. 
Once it got in these bounds, though, that's the thing, isn't it? Yeah. It's very shifty, isn't it? Yeah. Just doesn't want to play ball at all, does it? I believe it's his land. Michael has followed the agents down to the farm buildings, but he's left his keys in the car. Hang on, you can't take those. at the moment, sir. Worth just a few hundred pounds at auction, the car alone won't be enough to cover the six and a half thousand pound debt. But it could be a valuable bargaining tool for the agents. What value we attach to something might not be the same value that the defendant attaches to it. So what we see as, you know, possibly an old car or whatever it may be, in fact, to them, is, is worth a whole lot more. Um, uh, and it's worth a lot more to them than it is in monetary value. Well, I'm going to try and get in here. Might be nothing, but... Ah, yeah. boat. Caravan, a boat. A ride-on mower. This belongs to the Welsh water. After claiming the agents were at the wrong address, Michael now says that the barn and its contents belong to a water business, Worthenbury Welsh Water, and that they're nothing to do with him. Matt and Gary turn detective. Looks interesting, that. Deeds, site plans. You've got letters here, Michael, with your name on. It is your property, isn't it, Michael? It's not my property. The agents have found paperwork listing Michael as a former director of Worthenbury Welsh Water. We've got your name on, sir. Yeah. This has nothing to do with you earlier. This, this is my paperwork. In a barn that's got nothing to do with you. Not in a barn. It looks like a barn to me, sir. Unless Michael can prove that the items in the barn well, belong to the water to company man. and not him personally, they could be seized. But there's a problem. The only thing that's worth anything, mate, the in this old place, is behind you. Ah. Mm. Who does this belong to? That was all part of Worthenby Welsh Water stuff. Who does it belong to? That belongs to the company. OK. To the company? Yeah. Can he prove it? Because at this point in time, as far as Caesar Blassets go, that's going to be what we're going to be seizing, I think. Without proof that the water company owns the boat, the agents could seize it. But the situation is clearly beginning to take its toll. Don't you cry. I'm in a bit of a state at the moment. I'm in shock. He's just have right. to excuse me and bear with me. OK. What can you pay off this debt today, sir? All I've got is £100. Right. I had not only this one debt, I've got a court order for 80000 I've got, I think it's 13 and a half acres left on this site, being took off Sorry. me by the bank. The bank has repossessed it. Right. Yeah. I used to own everything here, £3 right. million. Pounds. I've had a fortune in the past. Everything's gone when the recession came. It seems that Michael used to own a large percentage of the estate, a former farm and invested thousands here in property development. But hard times have forced him to sell up. And now what little land he has left has been taken into receivership to pay off an additional £80,000 debt. I understand what you're saying. Listen, Michael, I understand what you're saying. But you also have to understand our job, OK? I, I understand that. Despite Michael's situation, the agents must get this case resolved. And their only option now is to seize the boat. But then, another man arrives at the barn. Is this gentleman looking for you? Oh, here he is. Also, well, explain who we are, sir. My name's Miss Tyler, my High Court Enforcement Agent. The man is a property developer. He's interested in buying Michael's land and has come to view it. While Michael takes him to see the land, Gary and Matt check for any other assets they could seize. We've got two old boats, a strip caravan. It's a strange one, isn't it? I think that barn that we've been in is probably the only bit of the farm that he's actually got left. There's literally nothing here to satisfy the debt. Ten minutes later, Michael returns to the barn with some surprising news. The man has offered to buy the land. Right now, what was that? We're going to go through now. Mm -hmm. He's paying 90000 for it. I think the bank's owed about eighty. There's ten left over. By the time they take the fees out, there's nothing there to pay. And that's it sorted. It's a promising development for the agents, but they will still need an immediate down payment and some well, guarantees on the deal before they can walk away. So what we need to do is sell. Man, he's selling all of his property just to get debt off of him. He's not seeing none of this money. He thought he was going to have a smooth little tin, no? That's this for today, don't we? Well, look, I can offer to pay a hundred pounds okay. today. I know you keep saying that, but that hundred pounds isn't going to be enough, no, is it? Well, I've already borrowed as much as I can. Right. Off family and everything. Mm -hmm. I'm in a hell of a state. Mm. 
I understand things aren't great. Great? They're, 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 they're unbelievable. Yeah, I understand that. Yeah, well, we, but then uh, suddenly, Michael increases his offer. I can go and try and find a thousand pound now, and I don't know what I'm going to do, but I know I'll be able to. So if I give you your car back, you'll go away and you'll get a thousand pounds? Yeah. Matt gives Michael an hour to raise the cash and calls the office to see whether his offer of £1,000 today and the balance when the land is sold off is acceptable to the claimant. Hi, Matt. Hi, I'm on the strangest job ever. But instead of leaving to go and fetch the money, Michael suddenly pulls a large amount of cash from his wallet. <laughs> I thought you only said you could have 100 today, sir. You got more in your wallet. This is to pay someone else and I'm going to pay it out of this. I'm not sure how much is here. Get counting then. <laughs> After claiming he had only a hundred pounds, Michael has now produced eight hundred. The amount of times someone's told me that they've not got a penny, but then when push comes to shove and something's about to be lost, suddenly cash starts to appear. Um, so you know, it's uh, it's amazing where people can pull money from when there's an issue. It's been accepted, Michael. Right. Well, thousand thousand pounds today right. with a balance by the first of December. The payment plan may have been accepted. But if Michael can't raise the extra £200 he needs, the deal you could be off. Right, may I have my key? I'll go and get the other 200 There you go. Thank How you. long will you be? Um, a couple of hours, I think. A couple of hours? I'll be back, but... A couple of hours. An hour. While the agents wait for Michael to return, Gary puts the boat under a controlled goods agreement. If Michael doesn't pay the balance, the agents will have to seize it. It's the first boat I took control of, to be fair. You get asked for serial numbers and things like that, and model of the boat, but, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm from the Midlands. We, we don't see boats in the Midlands. 45 minutes later, Michael returns with the £200. So that didn't take you two hours, point, did it? I believe you. My brain's all over the place. <laughs> well, I hope things improve for you, Michael, and I hope we don't have to come back, mate. I've always tried to stay positive through everything. As difficult as it may be, but that's what you have to do. Michael, thank you. I hope this gets better for you, mate. All right. Thank you. The case is Pretty resolved you, for now. But if Michael doesn't pay the £5,500 he still owes within 30 days, the agents will be back. Do you think he'll pay, mate? Do you think it'll get sorted? I think we'll be back here yeah. on a Monday morning, getting our boots muddy again. Do you think? No, I think he's going to pay. <laughs> And he'll have better just head in the sand again. So, yeah, I do believe we'll, we'll have to be back here in December. Or is that my no faith in humanity? Maybe. Maybe. Over the past 12 years, the number of High Court writs issued in the UK has increased by more than 50%. Nearly half a million writs have been issued since the beginning of the decade resulting in the recovery of over £400 million. $82 million. It's an important job they got going on. That's why, does, do they still got these people? Yeah, they do, right? Steve Pinner and Max Carraher are back on the road. This time in Romford, Essex, on a very unusual case. We're off to see the Mayor and Burgesses of the London Borough of Havering in the Town Hall. The Mayor? We're looking to collect £12,413.94. pence. I don't think they're going to be pleased to see us. In the Town Hall? The council were taken to court by a private landlord over damages to a property made by a benefit tenant. The council appealed but lost, and now the agents are here to collect the full amount. Plus, the council got taken to court? Wait, say the case again? Lord, over damages to a... To collect £12,413.94. pence. I don't think they're going to be pleased to see us. What's the the council were taken to court by a private landlord over damages to a property made by a benefit tenant. Broski Kwan, salute for the follow. Wait a minute. I didn't even know that was a possibility to take, like, if you're a private landlord and you rent your, land, your, your, your units out for council staying, 
and nobody fixes the damage after they leave, you can sue them and win. The council appealed but lost, and now the agents are here to collect. And they appealed and lost? Like the full amount plus court costs. They should have There's that money a car though. park at the end. Pay and display. What's the chances of them putting a parking ticket on us today? Okay, let's uh, find a front door. Let's go around here. The writ is not against the mayor personally, but Havering Council. So the agents have a right to remove any assets belonging to them if payment isn't made. They and it will remove assets. That looks wow. like they're. I don't understand how would they not have the money for this. They're in luck. There's a vehicle just out the front. I would take that as being the mayor's car. So would I. That needs to be seized. The mayor's car? Hello, miss. It's not your borough. Okay. Um, we are here to see the mayor. The mayor? Yes. All right. Hold on. Thank you very much. That's embarrassing. Hello. Yes, we'd like to see the mayor. Um, you'll need to make an appointment. I have a high court writ. I'd like to see the mayor. Okay. The mayor's not always in the building. Um, you'll need to make an appointment. We can try and get hold of. If you would, that would be, be great, great, madam. I'm going to take the vehicle if that's all right. Can I have the keys? While Steve waits for the employees to make some calls, Max goes to clap the mayor's limousine outside. There's a vehicle with... That was a limousine? The mayor's logo on it. We're going to seize that at this moment in time. Have a London that's bar. That's far from a limousine. That's a four-door sedan. What are they talking oh. about, limousine? Some paperwork here. Mayoral request to attend out-of-borough event. Definitely the mayor's vehicle. That's good enough for me. Clamping the mayor's limousine outside the town hall could be embarrassing for the council. But will it be enough to convince them to pay the £12,000 they owe? High Court Enforcement. Oh, that's good enough for me. Now, a council official. Well, said, is I don't need a recap. We're embarrassing the mayor. It's up. And I said, I'm good. It's a decent stream. Trying to work out who sick. the agents need to talk to to get the matter resolved. I need yep. information from you, yep. and I can then go and get the right legal team. So if you could tell me what it's for... OK. It's not the mayor in person. No. It's the mayor and Burgess's of Haver. OK. Can I give you that? Can you give you that? I will have to lock that door, but you can get that that way. I'm literally going to be... Also, I don't look like I'm running. I'll be back the car. Alright, but I'll be back. You can chase me, love. I won't be running. Debt discriminates against nobody. It doesn't matter where you are in life, whether you're on the lowest rung of the ladder or you're at the top of the ladder. Collecting from a large organisation, yes, they're going to have the money. The downside is it's finding the person to sign the cheque or pay the bill because someone will want a piece of paper to say that they can pay it. Someone will want a signature to say that, yes, that's OK, the money can go. So that that's not what you It's a high court writ. You feel me? We're not here to negotiate. We're not here to take our time. You got the mayor's limousine, a.k.a. four-door sedan, clamped up outside. It's time to go. Whether you're an elected official or not. And this is the type of negativity that I live for. People in power getting stripped of it. <laughs> ah, yeah. Talk to That's them. the difficulty of it. Minutes later, the official comes back with the council's chief lawyer. Hey, Hello. Steve Pinner. Hi. High Court Steve Enforcement Jordan. Agent. We have a writ in the name of the mayor. Not yeah. the mayor personally. The mayor is the office. The mayor is 12000 413 pound 94p right. and we are looking to collect that now yes all right 
The trouble is, it doesn't really tell us what it relates to. We wouldn't have information about no. that. We're, we're simply the enforcement. Mm. Do you mind if I make a few inquiries? Because um, I've got no idea what this relates to. Yeah, um, obviously, yeah. we're not going to pay you for something we don't know anything about. They, you yeah, guys do know something about it. It's already tried to oh, be an yeah. appeal. But the people but... that you actually speak <laughs> to don't know anything about it. Absolutely. It's an organisation. Yeah. So, um, do you mind if I just go down the corridor and make a few inquiries and okay. find out? Try to put a file on it. Fine for me, sir. Why is she still in the room? First of all, you got who we need to speak to. You can get out. We're talking about some we not gonna be. Girl, get out. Yeah, get holler at you later. While the lawyer makes his inquiries, Max goes out to run a check on the mayor's limousine. Hello, John. It's Max here. Um, I've got... The mayor's vehicle clamped at the moment. Can I run an HPI check on that, please? Certainly, this is the mayor's vehicle, yep. Yeah? Yep. Unfortunately, it's on uh, finance. It's on finance. It's, ah. it's not good news. The car can't be seized. But now another council vehicle is parked behind it. John, can I give you another one? There's a vehicle with London Borough of Havering written on it parked behind I wouldn't right be surprised it. if all of these are wrong. Correct. Right. It's free of finance. Uh, we've got an approximation on the value of road taxes of uh, five thousand pounds. The van okay, is that owned one. by the council and will clear almost half the debt. Max unclamps the limousine and goes to seize it, just as its driver appears from the building. I ain't gonna clap to you. Max's clamp game is strong. Sorry, madam, you can't drive off in this vehicle. It's seized at the moment. Okay. Sorry about that. I'll probably go inside and have another cup of tea. Okay. What's that? No, it's, it's nothing to do with parking, madam. Oh, nothing to do with you. Don't worry. Oh. Um, it's more the council. So nothing to do with you. Don't feel bad or anything. 20 like minutes later, late. the mean? council's lawyer reappears. I've made some progress, right? So I know the case is down. We need to make the payment. Now, in terms of the, the method of payment, what I can do is get a bank transfer. That's somewhere. not a problem. I'll so give you the all I just need to do is to get the details where I need to send to. I can give you them, sir. Okay. So I'm sure you appreciate we can't take boots off the ground until um, until we, we know that the money. I ain't gonna lie, their conversion rate is crazy today. Season five, episode five. They didn't did everything. They, they they did everything we want to see. In, a, in an episode of Can't Pay With, somebody got their ball head slapped. That was enough. I could have cut it off at that point. You feel me? But then they then it just got better and better. We just took a car. I don't like that we took ma'am's car. But, it, hey. Yeah. Life got to life, in, didn't it? From our office, yeah. You very much indeed. The agents must wait for the office to confirm they've received the transfer of funds before they will unclamp the van. I know having a clamped vehicle outside of the head office isn't ideal, but unfortunately it's, it's not nothing you've done whatsoever, but... Max, it's your fault. Yeah. Steve's lovely. <laughs> I guess so. Uh, the council should learn to pay their bills on time. <laughs> then this wouldn't happen. Yeah, I'm not a popular chap today, I'm not, no. <laughs> Moments later, the office calls Max. Hello, Max speaking. Hi, Max. It's in. It's in? It's in, yeah. Excellent. We shall issue a receipt and we can release... I them. wonder what's the, like, percentage on the commission that they get, because there's 12 bands. We're like, what's their percent? Thank you very much. Thank you, Tyler, Bye. If you check, it should have gone through by Just checked, Madam. Thank you for that. Lovely. We're just doing all the relevant paperwork for it. There's okay. it and the, um, the copy of the receipt for you. Thank you. The council has paid off the debt in full. But as the agents go to release the council van, they spot someone about to get into the mayoral car. The mayor. Oh, that's the mayor. <laughs> Hello there, Madam. It's, it's obviously an oversight somewhere along the line. How it's, it's now been dealt with. <laughs> That's the mayor. 
She about six foot four, ain't she? She's tall. We were chairing a meeting for Citizens Advice Bureau. <laughs> Come down and you've got <laughs> I hope we haven't ruined your day. You have. You've made me really late for the next I do apologise. You have, and I'm finished now for the day. <laughs> Take care. <laughs> it's all been done, oh, sorted, right. and that's the end of it. Did you a photograph of it? No, I didn't actually. <laughs> Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. Take care. She's actually pretty, very pleasant. You know what I'm saying? Funny how she shows up, just as it's all dealt with. It's been a successful job for the agents but they're just about to find out it's not only the council who need to pay their way. Just you, got, you got a ticket? <laughs> oh, he ain't, is he? Oh, he hasn't. Oh! <laughs> Unbelievable. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. You've just given us a parking yes, ticket. Yes, I did, sir, unfortunately. We're here with a high court writ. I've been called here saying check for around for vehicles. That you gotta understand, uh, Steve. We're, he's here to do a job. Um, you're here parked illegally without payment, and his job is to collect. No matter why you're here, he's just gonna he's just gonna give tickets and you pay who you gotta pay. Been parked here without paying the pay and display. Talk okay. to him. I came around. Talk check. to him. This is the only vehicle that I found. Unfortunately, everybody has to pay a ticket. Okay, that's um, not a problem. I got a parking ticket at the end of that, and I suppose that's karma, really. So, yeah, you win some, you lose some. That's hilarious. You like us doing your job. I don't have a problem with that. Release without charge, so you can slap ball heads and be cool? A date for a court hearing to get the writ set aside. Salute. Yeah. That's good for her. Everything worked out, man. Tell her, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post on